Yeah, I checked out some of the debate from um, Maine last night. And, mm-hmm. you know, this is a pretty hotly contested race. Obviously, uh, most people are paying, t- paying attention to it because of Susan Collins is one of the most vulnerable senators in the entire country. You know, Maine, I think, is actually going pro-Biden, like, in the double digits now. I think it's, like, pro plus 10, at least, for Biden right now, mm-hmm. Maine. So yeah. I-, I think that's at least the last poll-, poll-, poll I saw. I could be wrong on that, but I'm pretty sure. And if that's true, that is a that spells absolute disaster for Susan Collins mm-hmm. because that means all of those people are also going to be voting down-ballot Democrat, too, because that's how most people vote. They vote down ballot, either all Democrat mm-hmm. or all Republican. Yeah. So if all those people are showing up for Donald Trump, that means Susan Collins is done. Anyway, they had the first actual debate last night. And because Maine has, is the only state in the country to have ranked choice voting, um, it wasn't just a debate between the Democrat, Sarah Gideon, and the Republican, Susan Collins. It also was between, it also had Lisa Savage, the independent Green on the stage, as well as this other guy whose name was like Max Klein, I want to say, or something like that, who was just absolutely uh, annoying. He kept like, refusing to answer questions and saying like like request denied every time they would try to get him to like stay on topic Rachel, that's an excellent question but as i mentioned i've got to be way outside the box and i have to be different because i'm competing against a hundred million dollars and so i'm going to put your question aside and i have a bombshell to announce tonight you know right now i would ask if, that you stick with the question if well you- uh request denied uh what i'd like to say is the eyes and ears and the voices of the people we represent nature and the wilderness. And that brings me to the CMP corridor. How many people, up to 80,000 Let me interrupt for a second, people. Mr. Lindy. Yep. Do you have any interest in health care? That's the uh, round yes, we're I talking do. about. And I, I'm then I think let's all. talk about that, and we yep. can talk about other things uh, later. Request denied again, uh, and I appreciate that. And, and these moderators are such great moderators. And I apologize, because I know you're all doing your job as best as possible. But please realize, well, I haven't started my time. I'm addressing this, and you're already flashing me. Well, that so, was the time allotted, and that's how no, it was used. Okay, well, then let me ask for clarity. I'm competing against $100 million here, okay? They're the front runners. In order for me to be the U.S. Senate candidate, I have to be out of the box tonight. And we need to I've know where you stand on the box, issues as well. And I've got to be different. All right, Mr. And Lynn, thank as you. A, as a moderator, I want the question, but I don't want to be judged on my answer because the only people judging my answer are the main we're, we're moving voters on, on November 3rd. So Max, now under, you're taking my yeah, time. Yeah, well, I'm you're requesting you don't Lisa interrupt Savage's me because I'm already fighting against $100 million. I don't want to fight the moderators all night. And part of my strategy is to be outside the box. All right. Let's okay. hear from Ms. Savage, please, on the health care question. Certainly. Thank you. As a school teacher in Central Maine for 25 years, even before the pandemic hit and we moved into a public health emergency, um, I saw the families around me struggling to uh, get adequate health care. Many of the children had health care, but the adults uh, in the family did not, and nobody had adequate dental care. That is not fair. That should not be the case in the wealthiest nation in the world. I stand for Medicare for All, single-payer, universal health care, which um, should be expanded to cover everyone who's not covered now, and it should be improved to cover dental and mental health and vision and hearing that aren't covered now. I think that the majority of people in the uh, United States agree. I know that the majority of people in Maine agree, and I do know that under ranked choice voting, it's safe for if voters in Maine agree with me that we need Medicare for all, they can rank me first without any fear of spoiling the election, and they can show with that vote that they want Medicare for all too. Then Lisa Savage is on the other side of the stage, super poised, talks policy the entire time, sticks to the point, is extremely serious, um, and frankly, in my opinion, came off far better than anyone else on stage, including Sarah Gideon, who is just the most milquetoast, you know, cookie cutter corporate Democrat you've ever seen. You know, all of us know that even before this pandemic started, we saw Mainers making terrible choices every day about whether they were going to see a doctor or put food on the table. Nobody should have to make a choice like that. And everybody deserves access to health care they can afford. You know, she seems like a nice woman, but like, she, I mean, just the most basic, we need to expand access to health care, like not taking bold stances on anything, just basically the most like bland, inoffensive, uh, to the general masses type you could possibly find clearly handpicked by Chuck Schumer propped up uh, at the expense of anyone else in the main primary, including Betsy Sweet, who was actually, yeah. Isn't she like the speaker of the house for yeah, like the main, the main house. Yeah. 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 And like, don't get me wrong. I mean, I, I hope she, if it's between her and Susan Collins, I hope she wins. Susan Collins is a disaster, especially under the Trump administration. And she yeah, when she was, voted for fucking confirming Kavanaugh, which I thought for sure she wouldn't do. I yeah. believe we spoke with Lisa Savage yeah. about this when we had her on the show. 
she always puts on like this charade of like concern, like, Oh, like, Oh, I'm going to pretend like I'm going to hold out and maybe vote against it. But then at the end of the day, she always falls in line and, you know, votes with her colleagues to fulfill the agenda of Donald Trump and her, uh, you know, Republican friends. And, uh, and also her debate performance was just terrible. Like she was so stilted. It felt like it was the first time in years she'd actually had to like address the masses. You know, she felt, it felt like she was by far the most uncomfortable person on the stage. It seemed like she was like really on edge and like could barely, uh, you know, her answers all seemed extremely rehearsed. There are three key factors when it comes to health care. First of all, we need transparency in pricing. You should know what the medical procedure is going to cost before you have it. Second, we need to ensure access. That means maintaining our rural hospitals. It's, it's bizarre how uh, poorly she perform, performed in this debate. You know, I could see any of these candidates doing... Uh, people wanting to vote for uh, uh, other than Sarah, I mean, other than Susan Collins. So, I mean, that definitely helps Sarah Gideon, who's, of course, the favorite given the funding that she has from the Democrats and the attention that she's getting because of the amount of money they're spending on the airwaves. Millions and of also dollars. because Susan Collins is a recognizable name to kind of compete against. And yeah. I think that they're also trying to position themselves like this is the kind of battle that the Democrats like. This is the kind of thing that like, you know, Nancy and Chuck are like, oh, yeah, this is a battle. Like this is the kind of competition they like yeah. because at the end of the day, it's like, OK, we're going to win one for our team exactly. and we're not going to lose any for our corporate donors. Exactly. And and yeah, and both Sarah Gideon and Susan Collins, I mean, despite having uh, some some issues of real disagreement. I mean, I'm sure there's some, you know, legitimate concerns that differences they have on things like abortion and stuff like that. But yeah. like when it comes to the, when it comes to, you know, preserving the system and serving their corporate donors and stuff, they're basically filling out know, banks, you cut know, from the same cloth. They're yeah. not going to shake things up. They're both, they're basically both milk, milk toast corporate establishment style candidates. And, you know, in my opinion, Lisa Savage came out, came off really, really strongly. I think she destroyed, everyone else on stage. I think that if anyone was actually watching that debate because they cared about policy, then there's a clear winner. You know, Sarah Gideon made a lot of, you know, like I said, a lot of corporate Democrats speak, a lot of platitudes and, yeah. you know, uh, vague language about what she's going to do policy wise. But Lisa Savage was there with the substance. She was talking about, you know, I think that Medicare for all doesn't just make sense because uh, it's a moral imperative, but because businesses all over Maine, small businesses and big businesses are being forced to provide health care to their employees. I don't think that's an economically smart thing to do. How is that encouraging people to want to open a small business if they have to provide health care to all of these employees? Uh, I mean, that's a great, I think that's one of the best ways to frame Medicare for all because it really does. I mean, obviously it speaks to the moral imperative, like I said, but it also frames it in a way that just makes so much sense. Like it, business owners should not have to uh, pay the health care of their employees employees when they're govern when we have a tax system that can uh, afford us that basic human right anyway it's ridiculous yeah exactly and i think if you also take you know health care off the table you and you know obviously you put other incentives in place you have to i mean if we're gonna I mean, and, and, you know, obviously you and I are tremendous critics of the capitalist system and whatever, but there has to, if, the, if it's going to maintain itself without being completely swallowed by, um, you know, a few massive yeah. corporations where like, you know, essentially like at some point Amazon's going to decide to go to war with Walmart. And then if Amazon beats out Walmart, which I'm thinking that they probably would just because they're savvier and I, I don't yeah, know. I agree. I just, if I'm placing bets, I think Amazon could take, take out some real, real, yeah. um, Anyway, uh, market um, share from there. And it's definitely on their agenda. Mm -hmm. um, and once you have something like that happen, where you see like Amazon, Walmart, and yep. Target all become Amazon, and you also have Amazon becoming the biggest, like everything, delivery, uh, you know, yep. everything, right? Yep. Uh, cloud and, space. And those are the companies that can afford to pay or to give their employees, you know, some healthcare because they're just such rich, massive companies. So forcing employers to give, their company to give their employees healthcare is actually a huge giveaway to the corporations because they're the only businesses that can feasibly afford to do that. It's really just except then they don't anyway, right? They just they make everybody anyway, like right, a fifteen dollar an hour so, slave or ten ninety nine contractor. And they write the rules. But if you are going to force companies to give their employees healthcare, uh, it's really just fucks over the small businesses because if you're if I mean like if you're trying to build a startup or a small business, like it's all it's almost unimaginable how you're going to make that you know payment and uh, let alone afford them good health care you know anything but like the bare bones plan so it really is it really is just a travesty for small businesses that are already you know struggling to make it and i say that not because i 
you know, think that all small businesses are amazing and that there's no exploitation that goes on in small business. But I say that because the small businesses are the only alternative to just a complete corporatized takeover of all industry, which will lead to more exploitation uh, in the, you know, grand scheme of things. It'll lead to more outsourcing, more uh, industrialized agriculture and less community-based localized industry. Yeah, hundred um, percent. So yeah, I think Lisa Savage is the clear choice for anyone who was watching that debate last night in Maine. Uh, unfortunately, you know, it's still obviously going to be a hugely uphill battle for her just because of how well-funded Sarah Gideon is. But I mean, the fact that they have ranked choice voting, that's something she said multiple times last night. She was like, you don't have to worry about spoiling this race. You can vote for me as you can rank me first and you won't have to worry about spoiling the race. So yeah, and that's a great point. And I, I do hope that that leads to people feeling more comfortable mm -hmm. voting for green.